In this lesson, we'll learn how to paint a subdermal layer for our hand. Okay, great. So in the last lesson, we wrapped up the bump map, at least for right now, and we're ready to go ahead at this point and move on to our diffuse textures. Now, thinking about the diffuse textures, we could look at literally any photograph of a hand. We can look at the hand in front of us. And now in this course, we're going to be doing the hand of a, a male Caucasian. So thinking about that, we're going to be painting these colors uh, to look like this hand belongs to a person of, of that gender and, um, and, the, and that ethnicity. So, um, thinking about the way we're going to approach these diffuse colors, um, I'm going to challenge you to approach these from the inside out because, you know, we look at our hands and not only do we see a lot of flesh tones there, but we also can see a lot of reds, um, especially when we start to look at things like the palm of the hand and the insides of the fingers. Uh, we start to see more blood that's closer to the surface of the hands. Well, um, I'm not going to get too scientific scientific on you as far as how the hand breaks down into um, really three different layers, but um, we're going to go ahead and kind of break our hand and the diffuse colors down into a subdermal layer and then an epidermal layer. So um, let me go ahead and jump over here to our diffuse channel. I'm going to go ahead and open up its layer stack and we'll just drop it right over here. And you can see here that inside this particular layer stack, we just have the single base layer. Now, I'm going to go ahead and create a couple of layer groups. So we'll go ahead and tap on this button right here. Uh, it's created our first one. We'll tap it one more time and create a second group. So uh, we can go ahead and come in and double click on that first one. And we'll just call this guy subdermal. And let's go ahead and double click on the second one. We'll call that epidermal. All right, fantastic. Now, we've got a couple of layer groups that we can begin to create layers inside of. So uh, let's go ahead and create our first paint layer, and we'll just drag this down into our subdermal group, just like so. And we can go ahead and call this something like base. All right, fantastic. So we're ready to go ahead and begin painting these diffuse textures. So, um, you know, right now we're looking at the shader, I believe. If we hit the I key on our keyboard to bring up our channel pop up, you can see there's our Fong shader selected. Really, all we need to look at right now is the current channel. So um, you can see here we're looking at just that base gray. Now that gray exists on this bottom most layer here. So um, we'll probably end up deleting that layer. Um, not before not too much longer but uh, let's come in here at this point and jump into our brush editor and go over to our skin shelf and I'm going to go for a brush for my basic paint brush uh, here and let's go ahead and go for this third one here now um, if we double click on that you can see it's called modeled skin pattern underscore one so um, this particular brush is what we're going to use to basically come in and paint our base diffuse for this subdermal layer of the skin so um, now the subdermal layer is going to include um, really the bottom most layer the subcutaneous layer as well as what's known as the dermis um, the epidermis is the top most layer. So um, we're going to kind of combine the, the dermis and the subcutaneous layer into this subdermal layer. So um, now in order to give you a sort of a point of reference for this, uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you an image here. Now this image here isn't really for the faint of heart, but um, it is a great example of what we want this to look like. So let me go ahead and bring up this image here. And uh, this really just kind of looks like raw meat, but I want you to take a look at a lot of the color patterns here. Um, pay, uh, don't pay so much attention to the fatty tissue that's left over, but the pinks, the reds, and we even have some oranges. All of these colors sort of modeled together here. So um, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and drag this particular image up to another screen here. That way I can be looking at it as sort of a point of reference. Now, unfortunately, I'm not able to include that image in our project files. That is one I've found on an, uh, an internet image search. So um, you might just Google subcutaneous, uh, which is, that is the bottom most layer of the skin. So um, hopefully that one will come up in your image search. But um, with this modeled skin brush, I want to come down here to some of these colors that I've saved. And um, let's go ahead and maybe start with this guy. And... You can see I've settled, set him to my foreground color. 
right there. And I'm going to hit X to switch my foreground and background colors places. And we'll select this darker purple here. So um, if I hold down the S key, you can see that I have the entire patch selected. And I also have that base layer selected here. Now we want to come in and make sure that we have the diffuse channel selected as well. But we can take this brush and let's just start on the back side of the hand here. So uh, we'll come over to our brush properties and let's start to kind of configure this. I'm going to turn on the flow and the alpha pressure control, but I'm also going to turn on the color control. Now what this is going to do is as I begin to paint, you can see here how the two colors, background and foreground, are starting to blend together. So if I press lightly, you can see it's painting with that pink, but the darker I press, we're starting to get more of that, sort of that purple color. Now, if we want to look at position, you can see here that purple color is set to my foreground and the pink is set to my background. So um, with those two in place, let me just clear the buffer out here and we'll just start really quickly painting in some of this modeled coloration here. I tapped the uh, trigger on my stylus, which was mapped to my right click. So let's go ahead and bake that down. And really, we're not looking for a specific pattern here. I mean, we are looking at that image I just showed you as a point of reference. Um, but also starting to come in here and just kind of create almost just like a blotchy um, layer here. Now you can see that at this point we're starting to get some color, some diffuse color down on our model and we're starting to have a lot of these lights basically interfering. So you can see that specular highlight um, that's kind of rolling off the surface there. That's influencing my decisions um, when it comes to color. So what we could do is we could come over here and again right click on our toolbar and open up our lights palette and he's right there. So uh, let's come in here and find uh, the culprit of that. Let me just hide the lights till we find the ones that are causing the problem. There's one right there. And I'm gonna come down here in the settings for that light. Let me just drag this guy up for right now and drop him right there so you can see exactly what I'm doing. I'm gonna change the diffuse color for this light. It's by default gonna be a white, but I'm gonna set it to this 50% gray. And we can come over here, and I believe that was a light number one. Yeah, light number one's um, needs to be adjusted as well. So we'll just set both of those to 50% gray. And you can see here how basically with that, we're starting to get a little less interference from those specular highlights. So um, you can see a little more accurate colors as I'm painting here. We can also jump over here to flat shaded mode, just like so which is really going to give you a, a, the, probably the most accurate description of the colors that you're actually painting. So um, I'm just going to come in here and again continue to basically just kind of splotch these colors together. Go ahead and bake that down. And you'll, one thing I want to point out the, uh, about the colors that I'm choosing at this point, they're both very cool colors because one thing I noticed in that, um, that image I showed you is that uh, underneath the, f the fatty tissue and the little splotches of blood that were still in the image, um, most of the colors, uh, with the exception of just a couple of them, are very, very cool colors. Um, purples cool reds, um, things of that nature. So um, we can come over here and begin to just kind of model those type of colors in. So I'm just kind of slowly working these colors in. If you decide you want to maybe change these colors up just a little bit so it's not quite so cool. Uh, maybe you want to bring a few more reds in, feel free to do that. Um, again, basically what we're going to end up doing in painting these diffuse textures is with this subdermal layer, we're going to basically have the underneath layer, the layer underneath the epidermis, that we're going to be able to come in and slowly start to peel back the epidermis and reveal this information. So um, rather than try and guess as to um, what color we should be painting the, the, the pinker areas in the hand, um, we're going to basically be masking out the epidermis and just revealing this subdermal layer. So 
as you can see, it's it's a fairly repetitive process, um, having to just kind of orbit around, slowly paint information in. Basically, as I'm painting this, though, I'm trying to get a fairly uniform pattern, making sure I get completely opaque paint down on the surfaces, um, because of the fact that I have my flow and my alpha pressure control turned on, if I'm not careful, I'll get some transparency there, and um, that gray is going to start to show through. Um, if you want just to spot check that, which you could always do, um, if you'd like, is you could come over here to the hand diffuse. There we go. And just hide that gray layer. So you're looking at the transparency grid. And you can still see I've got quite a bit of transparency peeking through these diffuse textures that I'm painting. So I'll probably continue just painting this uh, model texture on top of this base layer here within my subdermal group. Um, but again, I'm going to use the same techniques for hiding the fingers and painting into the cracks as I've showed you in previous lessons. And uh, basically, with the goal, we, we just don't want any kind of texture stretching in our end result. Because uh, texture stretching, again, it's, it's very, very apparent when, uh, when that's happening. So go ahead and work on finishing off this base subdermal diffuse color layer.